Zen 4 is finally here and today I'm reviewing the Ryzen 5 7600X. I will have reviews of the remaining lineup in the coming days so stay tuned for those. Unfortunately I caught some virus and was sick for a while and wasn't able to get the reviews up on embargo day. It's not the Rona, it's some other virus. Maybe also created in a lab in Asia, much like the 7600X which hails from Taiwan. The 5 nanometer slash 6 nanometer TSMC processors have proven phenomenal and although the 7600X has an advertised 5.3 GHz boost, I was able to get 5.4 GHz all core, perfectly stable without much fuss. Pretty impressive for a max PPT of 142 watts. If you are planning to build a new system, you will need a Windows key. So before we move to the benchmark numbers, here's a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you will probably spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key using a service like URCDKeys, it will be less than $15 after you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and if you want Windows 11, what I recommend you do is just buy Windows 10 and get a free upgrade while you can. Personally, I use Windows 10 Pro. Once you've made your purchase using a variety of different payment options available, you will instantly find the key in your purchased orders on the website. Click Get Keys and copy the key. Then, after you've installed Windows 10 Pro, of course, in Windows, press Start and type in Activate and click on Activation settings. Then click change product key, paste in the code and click next. That's it. Quick and easy and your Windows is now activated. If you need Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same 25% discount code C25 and get it for just $59.98. Since you're over there, check out the back to school sale of 50% off of PC peripherals like gaming mice, chairs, headsets and a slew of cool looking mechanical keyboards. Boards. Thank you to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Click the links in the video description to get your OEM Windows keys today. The 7600X is replacing the 5600X from the Zen 3 generation and comes in at $299. I'm going into this review as someone who wouldn't really recommend the 6 core in 2022, especially at 300 bucks on a platform that costs too much right now, but maybe I'll be surprised. In the Zen 4 announcement, AMD compared the 7600X to Intel's 12900K in gaming workloads, so I'll be comparing it to that as well to see if AMD is claims are valid and we'll also look at the 12600K and throw in the previous gen flagship the 5950X which recently got discounted to just $550. A big thank you to AMD for providing the Zen 4 chips for this review and also to Intel for providing the 12900K, 12600K and 12700 which I'll use throughout this series of videos. Now to make things interesting I've tuned the 12900K and 12600K to their full potential, so I'll include those numbers also. And I want to give a shout out to the YouTube channel, The Good Old Gamer, who has a fantastic series on tuning Alder Lake. There's a link in the description to his channel. Go check out his content and subscribe to him. I'm going to show you the 7600X at its best because honestly, I think it needs it. So I'm going to show the results have 5.4 gigahertz all core. The difference from stock isn't that noticeable in actual performance, but I'll show you the difference in the few instances where it matters. Before we look at gaming performance, I should note that there are different schools of thought when it comes to benchmarking CPUs, and the enthusiast community, including some reviewers out there, are very passionate and vocal about eliminating GPU bottlenecks to really see which CPU is the fastest. And while testing games at 720p and even lower can be an interesting academic endeavor, at the end of the day it's absurd to test $300 plus CPUs in use cases that no sane person will use them for. So personally, I test 1080p and up, and I use a variety of workloads that I feel represent what the majority of people will be using these CPUs for. The exception being eSports, which require a different testing methodology, and a lot of time dedicated to finding repeatable scenarios for testing. So I'll leave eSports for a future video. Also note that for the gaming benchmarks, I disabled the e cores on the older late chips as that improves performance. I filed that under tuning, but for productivity, I 
turned the e-cores back on. So these are the chips tested and if you find that my benchmark results are different than what most reviewers are getting, then pay close attention to all the components used here. The choice of RAM, cooling, etc. can make a big difference when it comes to testing CPUs. Note that I purposefully used a different kit of RAM on the 5950X. It would certainly perform better in things like gaming had I used the same DDR4 Samsung B die kit I used for the older Lake systems, but like I said earlier, I'm trying to test realistic scenarios that are useful for my audience, you guys who are PC enthusiasts. And in the case of a workstation chip like the 5950X, it makes more sense to use 64 gigabytes of slower RAM than 16 gigabytes of fast tuned B die RAM, because that's a pairing that doesn't make sense in the real world. I can tell you that some projects in Premiere, for instance, won't even open if you have less than 64 gigabytes of RAM. Before we get to the gaming benchmarks, I know you will want to see Cinebench R23 scores, so let's get that out of the way first. Starting with a single core score, we see that the 7600X stock gets 1955 points, just shy of the tuned 12600K. Once overclocked to 5.4 GHz all core, the 7600X moves up to match the 12900K stock, a very impressive result considering the difference in prices and cores. Once tuned, the 12900K takes a significant lead. If you want to understand what I mean by tuned, then go back to the part where I put all the tested chips on screen. In Cinebench Multicore, the 7600X comes in last in this selection of CPUs. Even when overclocked, it falls short of the tuned 12600K. The old 5950X takes the lead when using PBO, but note that the tuned 12900K is not too far behind. Right, so the first game we'll look at is Spider-Man Remastered, and at 1080p, the 7600X gets an impressive boost compared to last gen's flagship, the 5950X. It lags behind the tuned 12600K by about 15 frames though. At 1440p, we start to see a GPU bottleneck, but the Intel chips still take the lead. So at the two most popular resolutions in this first game, it seems that AMD's claims that the 7600X is on par with the 12900K are not materializing, but there's plenty more games to come. At 4K, we've effectively reached the GPU bottleneck and all the CPUs perform about the same within margin of error. This is important data as you'll see in the video conclusion. Cyberpunk 2077 has seen a resurgence of late, possibly thanks to a tie-in animated show which I checked out while I was recovering from illness, and it's a pretty good show. Maybe more games should do these sorts of tie-ins. I loved the Castlevania one also a while back. Anyway, at 1080p all the CPUs except the old 5950X perform about the same, reaching a GPU bottleneck even at this baseline resolution. The lows here are all over the place because these are actually the minimum FPS instead of the 1% lows. At 1440p, the GPU bottleneck is even more evident. I won't even bother with 4K for this one, but do note that this is useful information. More on that later. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a game that makes good use of system resources, and at 1080p we do see some differences, but nothing you'd be able to notice in-game. The 7600X has a very impressive showing here, actually beating the stock 12900K and even the tuned 12600K. I'm sure AMD wishes all games were as well coded as this one. Do note that again, the tuned 12900K system is still slightly ahead. At 1440p we hit a GPU bottleneck and all the CPUs perform the same. The same is true for 4K with only the 5950X lagging a couple of frames behind. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is my favorite Assassin's Creed game, arguably the best in the series and here even at 1080p were GPU bound, so all the CPUs performed the same, with the exception of the 5950X workstation and its much slower RAM. No difference at 1440p, with just some margin of error differences from the multiple runs. And again at 4K, all the CPUs are performing exactly the same, with the 5950X struggling to keep up a bit. Why am I showing you this if there's a GPU bottleneck? We'll get to that in a minute. Saints Row rebooted recently and I thought I'd include it. At 1080p, the 7600X performs on par with the tuned systems, but does beat the stock 12900K by 5 frames on average and with better 1% lows. So AMD's claims of their new 6 core beating Intel's best are valid if we only look at the 12900K stock. Do note that I'm running the 7600X at 5.4 GHz all core. Not that that makes much of a difference in gaming. At 1440p, we reach the GPU bottleneck and all the CPUs performed the same within margin of error. 
And you've guessed it, the same is true for 4K. No difference between any of these CPUs. I did want to include a game with ray tracing turned on, and I chose Forza 5, as the 6900X performs exceptionally well in this game. But as you can see, even at 1080p, all of these CPUs perform the same. Although it should be noted how much faster the 7600X is than the Zen 3 flagship, the 5950X. AMD has done a phenomenal job when it comes to gaming with these Zen 4 chips. They're a huge improvement over last gen. It's a similar story at 1440p, and it's not really worth showing 4K, as it's much the same. Civ 6 comes with a built-in AI benchmark that looks at how long the AI takes to complete a turn at the later stages of the game. Here, the Intel chips were much faster than the AMD competitors, and there's been barely any improvement going from Zen 3 to Zen 4. Watch Dogs Legion is next, and at 1080p, there's actually a small difference between these CPUs, with the 7600X being just 5 frames behind the stock 12900K, while having similar 1% lows. Very impressive from AMD, who just a generation ago was massively behind. Of course, the tuned 12900K system is well ahead of the rest of the pack. That is, until we switch to 1440p. Here, the CPUs perform about the same within margin of error, with the exception of the 5950X. No point looking at 4K, as it's the same story. Next up, we have the Rift Breaker CPU benchmark, with a 7600X matching the 12900K stock, and being only 4 frames behind the tuned version. So again, all performing about the same. Total War Warhammer 3 is an RTS that one would have thought made heavy use of the CPU, but that's actually not the case. The battle benchmark that fills the game world with units is still GPU bound at 1080p, with all CPUs performing about the same. So even RTS games are GPU limited these days, it would seem. And for our last game, we have the Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker benchmark, which gives an overall performance score rather than an FPS average. Here, the 7600X performs very well, beating the competing 12600K even when tuned. The 12900K tuned is miles ahead though. So in single player and MMO gaming, as you saw, even at 1080p you will be mostly GPU bound in the vast majority of titles. Like I said in the beginning, esports is a different story but that requires its own video. I don't expect this to change with the next generation of GPUs, because people who are on 1080p will move up to 1440p, and the ones on 1440p will move up to 4K, and the cycle will repeat, with GPUs continuing to be the main bottleneck when it comes to gaming. If that's the case, as you saw with these benchmarks, then saving as much as possible on the CPU to invest in a better GPU, if gaming is your primary goal, is the wisest thing you can do. This is why I find it useful to look at 4K data, for instance, even when there's a GPU bottleneck. It shows you how important it is to dedicate more of your budget to the GPU and monitor. Moving on to productivity, one of the things you'll be doing a lot is compressing and especially decompressing files. And in 7-zip, the 7600X performs decently, outpacing the 12600K tuned. The 5950X is obviously in a league of its own here, thanks to the 16 cores and 24 threads it packs. Next up is the Nintendo emulator Dolphin 5, and it's great to see that AMD has solved the emulation problems it has had for a long time, with the 7600X now being on par with the 12900K stock. The use of AVX512 helps a lot here. Why Cruncher is a great benchmark for grunt CPU power, as it calculates pi up to a set of decimals of your choice. In single thread, the 7600X really shines here, taking its first win versus the rest of the pack, taking only 35 seconds to calculate 250 million units of pi. Even the tune 12900K couldn't match it. In multi-thread, the tables turn, and now the 7600X is over a second slower for the same calculation. Still, it beats the tune 12600K. V-Ray is a tile renderer similar to Cinebench, and due to the lack of cores, the 7600X really struggles to keep up here. Note that the tune 12900K beats even the 5950X, showing just how powerful the Intel flagship is when tuned properly, being great at gaming, rendering, and just general use. I don't think I can say the name of this benchmark, as I believe YouTube still censors it, so let's just call it Bob. In Bob, the renderer, the 7600X is the slowest of the bunch, showing again that it's not really suited for these types of workloads. And for our last benchmark, I wanted to do something a little different, and I'm kind of going off my testing philosophy of sticking to realistic workloads, but I thought it would be 
interesting to see how well does the new Zen 4 chips perform at AI-related tasks. Topaz Labs uses AI to upscale videos and their software does have a CPU-only mode. No sane person would use this software without a GPU, hence this not being a very realistic benchmark, but still, using only the CPU grunt, the 7600X gets a massive win here, beating even the 5950X. When it comes to temperatures, the 7600X seems to like to operate in the 95C range, reaching 100 Celsius when all cores are stressed, especially with the pretty aggressive overclock that I ran it at. There's an easy to set up eco mode, or you can manually undervolt the Zen 4 chips without losing much performance. I got it down to the 50 Celsius with minimal losses to performance. So based on what we've just seen, would I recommend the 7600X? While the chip itself is very competent, and AMD should be congratulated on achieving these clocks and IPC increases, it's no doubt a massive improvement over Zen 3. Coming in at $299 though, I feel that the platform cost at the moment is too high to justify the investment. The RAM kit I'm using for testing currently costs $280 on Amazon, and the Gigabyte AORS Master X670E is $500. The cheapest X670 board I can find is the MSI Pro Wi-Fi, which costs $290. You can get a 12600KF for $270 and buy a Z690 motherboard like the MSI Z690 Pro A for less than $200 and Samsung B Die RAM for less than $100 and you can get it to 3800 MHz or even higher depending on the quality of your chip. So two very comparable platforms in terms of performance but with Zen 4 you get a plug and play experience. The most you have to do is activate the Expo profile in the BIOS, it's just one click, while with the 12600K you save around $300, but you'll have to spend quite a bit of time in the BIOS tweaking things to get the most out of the chip. Even if you don't tweak the 12600K, I doubt most people will be buying in this range to play at 1080p, which is the only resolution where you might see any difference between all of these chips, for the most part. So I feel like at the moment Intel is offering better value, especially as with the money you save on the CPU and platform, you can get a better graphics card, which will have a much greater impact on your frame rate. If it were me, I wouldn't really buy a 6 core as I find them lacking in today's world, unless you are really just playing video games and doing nothing else. So I would look at the Zen 3 8 core chips if I were in the market for a new CPU, or maybe even the 12 core 5900X. I will delve deeper into the Zen 5 platform issues as I review the other chips in the lineup. To conclude, I simply cannot recommend the 7600X as things stand. Even though my reviews are coming a couple of days after launch, I haven't watched anyone else's reviews or articles or opinions on Zen 4, but I suspect the vast majority of reviewers will have different results than mine, and I could see most of them praising the 7600X and even recommending it based on how it performs versus the Intel chips stock versus stock. I don't think that tells the whole story though, which is why I wanted to test all the chips in the best possible configurations for each. Unfortunately for the 7600X, the platform cost is too high and the chip itself being a 6 core feels too expensive for today's world where there are so many options to choose from. When AMD first announced it, I evaluated it from the Zen 3 perspective, thinking the platform advantage of DDR5 plus PCIe 5 would be worth the extra cost. And maybe that will be the case when new GPUs launch, but now that I've tested it, I just don't find the extra $300 or more that you are spending to be worth it. If AMD had launched this chip on AM4, I think it would be a hit. As it stands, the expensive motherboards and expensive DDR5 really make it impossible to recommend the 7600X. If you buy a 5800X 3D, for instance, the platform will cost you $654, so you save $215, which can be put towards a better GPU, and you'll get a much better CPU than with the 7600X with more cores that will be useful beyond gaming. So despite AMD's great advancements with Zen 4, I simply cannot recommend the 7600 as things stand. In fact, I think both Intel and AMD need to revise their positioning regarding 6-core CPUs. I think these are the new 4-core and should be priced accordingly. The 7600X would only make sense at around $150 and even then only paired with a B650 board only when DDR5 prices come down considerably. For now, I can only recommend you stay away from the 7600 
6600X. There's no scenario where I can see it being a better buy than what's already on the market. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the rest of the chips in the lineup coming in the next few days to the channel. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Join my Patreon for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where I frequently share exclusive bits of information. If you can't contribute financially, then please give this video a like and share it as that really helps. Thanks for watching and until the next one.